On a dirt road in Cleveland, Texas, this is the home where a mass shooting left five people dead Saturday, including an eight-year-old child. Authorities say the violence started late Friday night after a family asked their neighbor, 38-year-old suspect Francisco Oropesa, to stop firing his gun so they could sleep. A gentleman stepped out of his house, uh, said, hey, we're trying to keep a, uh, uh, an infant um, to bed and he says it's his property he'll do whatever he pleases on his property the man went back in the house next thing they know he's walking up the driveway with the rifle in hand officials say Oropesa entered the house where 10 people were inside and opened fire with the AR style rifle they say all five of the deceased were from Honduras and at least two of the victims were killed while they were lying on top of young children to shield them Neighbors heard the gunshots. I mean, I can't believe it. It's hard <laughs> to think about those people dead and their families. As investigators collected evidence at the scene, officials searched for the suspect nearby in a heavily wooded area about 45 miles north of Houston. The FBI has brought in investigative resources, tactical and victim services resources to assist in this investigation. Investigators believe they have the rifle used in the shooting, but say the suspect should still be considered armed and dangerous. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News. And welcome. I'm Sherman DeSell filling in for Tom tonight. We begin in San Jacinto County where a manhunt continues for this man on the screen. 38 year old Francisco Oropesa, a Mexican national, is a suspect in the mass shooting that killed five people, including an eight year old child at a home just west of Cleveland. Authorities have widened their search up to a 20 mile radius. All five victims of the mass shooting have been identified. And as community, the community continues to mourn their deaths, Fox 26 is Natalie. He has that story from Cleveland. Well, one local organization was supposed to have their annual fundraiser this evening, but instead they opted to cancel the event and host a prayer vigil for the victims instead. They say this mass shooting has shaken the entire community. Be with the families, Lord God, that are going through, Lord God, for this tragic event that is happening. They're here in San Jacinto County, their family. We're, we're a county with 28,000 people. We take care of our own. If they're in the county, they're family. In lieu of their annual fundraiser, San Jacinto County Democrats held a prayer vigil for the five people who authorities say were shot and killed by their intoxicated neighbor, execution style. Investigators have now identified the victims as 25-year-old Sonia Argentina Guzman, 21-year-old Diana Velasco, Alvarado, 31 year old Julissa Molina Rivera, 18 year old Jose Jonathan Casares, and 8 year old Daniel Enrique Lasso Guzman. Those who knew the family from Honduras were heartbroken to learn the tragic news. I'm shocked and sad because I did know the people that the victims. It's heartbreaking because I used to see him every day walk. To the bus stop. The gunman, authorities identified as 38 year old Francisco Oropesa, remains on the loose as dozens of local, state, and federal law enforcement officers work around the clock to arrest him. That's the kind of thing we just don't see in San Jacinto County. So to say it has shaken the community would be a dramatic understatement. San Jacinto County Sheriff Greg Caper said Oropesa was shooting an AR-15 outside his home around 11.30 p.m. Friday when his next-door neighbors asked him to stop because their baby was sleeping. Instead, deputies say Oropesa went on a shooting spree and hasn't been seen since. The fact that it was the type of gun that it was, we should not be allowed, everybody should not be allowed to have those type of weapons. Here we have another case of where it's easier to get a machine gun than a fishing license. And we continue to see these tragedies across the United States, kids dying. Better is achievable, good is no longer good enough that we as a people have to continue to stand together to make change because if not, it could be your little girl, it could be your little boy um, that's gone or your family member that's gone. Authorities say that suspect still on the loose tonight. At this point, authorities have decided to widen the search for his whereabouts. If you know anything about where he could be, you're urged to contact the FBI. From San Jacinto County, Natalie He, Fox.
tragedy unfolded Friday evening. Five people killed, including an eight-year-old child, when a gunman opened fire inside a home in Cleveland, Texas, just outside Houston. Deputies were dispatched to a residence about a harassment complaint. When en route, multiple 911 calls came in of an active shooter at the location. When deputies arrived, they found several victims ranging in age from 8 to 40 years old. Four were dead. The 8-year-old died at the hospital. All of them had been shot. Investigators said they believe the suspect, identified as 39-year-old Francisco Oropesa, was intoxicated and began shooting an AR-15 on his front porch when a neighbor asked him to be quiet. A gentleman stepped out of his house, uh, said, hey, we're trying to keep a, uh, uh, an infant um, to bed, and uh, he says it's his property, he'll do whatever he pleases on his property. The man went back in the house. Next thing they know, he's walking up the driveway with the rifle in hand. San Jacinto County Sheriff Greg Capers told ABC affiliate KTRK it appeared some of the victims were trying to shield the children. Police found two dead bodies atop a harmed victims who were covered in blood. The sheriff says investigators have video of the suspect walking up to the house, which is how they identified Oropesa. Veronica Pineda lives nearby. She says there are always guns being fired in the neighborhood, so she thought nothing of it when she heard the gunshots Friday night. There's always shootings everywhere. This neighborhood, they're always shooting. So yesterday I heard the shooting, but I thought it was like a normal day. A judge issued an arrest warrant for the suspect and assigned a $5 million bond. Zorin Shah. ABC News Los Angeles. We want to begin, though, with some breaking news that we're following out of East Texas, where a manhunt is expanding for a mass shooting suspect now into the second day of that manhunt. And federal, state, lo local law enforcement officers, they're fanning out in search of Francisco or a who is believed to be responsible for killing uh, five of his neighbors, including a child. NBC's Priscilla Thompson joins us now once again from Cleveland, Texas. Take us there, Priscilla, um, as we are awaiting word of any updates on the apprehension of this suspect. Yeah. Well, Yasmin, I'm told that there will only be an update from law enforcement if the suspect is apprehended. But I will tell you what we're seeing on the ground here is there have been uh, state law enforcement and also the FBI walking through this neighborhood, knocking on doors, talking to neighbors, searching some of their homes and vehicles. And so this investigation is clearly still ongoing. We know that yesterday officials believed that they had a perimeter around the suspect. They had they were speaking to someone who had been in contact with him every couple of hours. And so it seemed as though they were closing in on this suspect. But we learned late yesterday that uh, those law enforcement officials found a cell phone and clothing of the suspect, but they did not actually find him. And after that, the dogs that were tracking him lost his scent. So it's unclear where this investigation goes from here. We know that there are multiple agencies on the ground here still searching. Last word we got was that there could be a 10 to 20. He could be 10 to 20 miles from here, if not further. He could be anywhere is what uh, one of the officials said. But meanwhile, we've been here speaking to neighbors about all of this. We spoke to one woman who knew both the suspect and the victims. And I want to play a little bit of what she shared about all of this. Take a listen. Guy and Family guy, got a son, he's always working, training his horses. I mean, anytime you've seen him, he was always doing something. He's worked for me, doing work, he's worked for the neighbors. Never, never have I seen a fight, an argument, raise his voice, anything. Family they parties. had family parties together. I mean, like I said, the four or five houses, they'd all get together. I mean, it was, it was a norm. So it was shocking for... It was beyond shocking. Uh, but we also know that obviously this did happen. Police have said that uh, alcohol may have been involved, that the suspect may have been intoxicated when he went over to that home and began shooting uh, those people. And the sheriff told me flat out firearm and al firearms and alcohol do not mix. And so now the search continues for uh, that suspect with two homes and two lives completely or many lives destroyed here. Yasmin. Uh, Priscilla, the FBI tweeted earlier today um, that they released an incorrect image of the suspect, MSNBC airing the image in the 1 p.m. hour before the FBI tweeted it was incorrect. Um, what do we know about what happened here? 
Well, we don't know much, Yasmin. I noticed that that had happened because I had retweeted the image and I saw that it had been deleted and I immediately called and reached out to the FBI to figure out what was going on. And shortly thereafter, about 40 minutes later, I was directed to this tweet that they had just posted saying that an incorrect image with a blue black backdrop was mistakenly disseminated and that image had been removed from the social accounts and urging people not to use that photo. Photo. And the FBI has since tweeted out more um, photos and the one thing that they did say in that tweet is this remains a fluid investigation. They also updated the spelling of the suspect's last name. So it seems that this is still a very active and fluid uh, situation as they try to get all of the facts in order and all of the answers as they're trying to disseminate this information to the public in the hopes that someone will be able to locate this suspect. And of course, the key warning from law enforcement is that if someone believes they see this suspect, do mm. not approach him. They believe he is armed and dangerous, urging folks to call police immediately. Yasmin. All right, Priscilla Thompson for us. Um, we thank you. We'll stay on this story. A Fort Worth man and his family say they are terrified and angry after I temporarily posted his photo saying he was the suspected shooter. He shares the same name as the suspect, but spells it differently. Now his family says they are receiving death threats this weekend. Fox Force Peyton Yeager spoke to a family member and joins us live with that story. Peyton. Blake and the Fort Worth family tells me the man who was wrongly identified just started a new job here in North Texas last week. He's a husband and father of four, and now the family is unsure when to leave their house. What if somebody sees the, the, a tweet or, or a Facebook share and they see his picture and they see him? I mean, you know. A Fort Worth family is now fearful after the FBI admitted it wrongly identified a man who is a wanted fugitive in the Houston area for killing five of his neighbors. Sunday afternoon, FBI Houston tweeted out, quote, an incorrect image of Francisco Oropeza with a blue backdrop was mistakenly disseminated earlier today. The image has since been removed from FBI social media accounts. Please do not use that photo. Fox 4 spoke to a woman Sunday who says that incorrect photo was of her brother-in-law, a husband and father of four who lives in Fort Worth. We are not naming the woman for her safety. I mean, they haven't gone outside or anything, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, keep in mind, he's a truck driver, so he drives all over the U.S., so it's like, you know, somebody sees him somewhere. The woman says the armed and dangerous suspect wanted out of San Jacinto County and her brother-in-law share a similar name. She says her brother-in-law called the FBI himself Sunday panicking. He explained to investigators that they had posted a picture of the wrong man and that the photo used was his newly taken commercial driver's license photo. So at that point, we're like, oh gosh, what do we do? I mean, this is being shared like basically nationwide. It's all over the place. An hour later, FBI Houston tweeted this, including new images of the suspect Oropeza and making it clear that going forward, the suspect's last name will be spelled Oropeza with an S. We went back, we uh, re looked at what we had, and now we're 100% confident we have the right photo out there. But it was a, it was a mistake. We will own up on it. At Sunday afternoon's press conference, the FBI addressed the mistake to reporters. As you can see, in an investigation like this, we're receiving information from a whole slew of agencies and the citizens. And um, it was a mistake on our side of it. We identified it. We acted quickly to remove that photo. But the Fort Worth family says screenshots and incorrect articles are still circulating on the web very horrible mistake. I just wish that they would do better, you know, journaling, making making sure that before they post something with just such a huge deal, they would do some research as to who the person is. And the man who was wrongly identified was told that an FBI agent would visit his Fort Worth home this afternoon. At last check, the family is still waiting for that FBI agent to show up before they leave the house. Blake, back to you.